you feel you're a happier man now than you were three and a half years ago? Happier, stronger, more alive, richer in every way. Except financially, of course. You say that the open box holds truth to be the greatest virtue. Right. Is that the same as saying honesty is the best policy? Wowee, oh, oui. that's a bit Machiavellian for me. I don't know. All right. Did you call yourself a church very recently because you thought it might impress the jury in this case? Yes. We guessed it might go down quite well. Good. That's very honest. Uh, was one of your chief reasons for bringing this case at all, the hope of getting money in damages? Sure, we need the stuff. Besides, we've been defamed. Great opportunity, healthy off the mortgage. And uh, the publicity? You like the publicity which this case is attracting? Love it. Yes, yes, you're being conspicuously frank with us, aren't you? Do you think you could tell the difference, Mr. Hayward, between real honesty and apparent honesty? What do you mean? Well, by apparent honesty, I mean when someone is prepared to admit to small faults so that his denial of major ones will be believed. Do you think that you could, as a leader of an organization professing truth to be the greatest virtue, uh, you could tell the difference between that and real honesty? I can tell the difference. Yes, I have no doubt the jury can as well, Mr. Haywood. Now, turning to Mr. Blower's article, do you dispute the accuracy of his factual descriptions? as well as his conclusions. Not as far as I remember. Good bit of reporting, I thought. Eloquent, crisp, witty. You admit then that your own resident psychiatrist has been struck off by the British Medical Association? Nutty as a fruitcake. He's the first to say so. Good psychiatrist, mind you. Mr. Hayward, I think I should point out that flippancy in no way helps your cause. My lord, I had no intention of being flippant. I humbly apologize. Do you also admit that children have taken part in these psychotherapy sessions? Yes, I admit that. Sessions which the jury have heard Dr. Gibbons describe as dangerous for unstable or immature people. Sessions that you hold without the help of a, a competent psychiatrist? Conventional psychiatry is irrelevant to us. By the way, what Tony forgot to say in his article is that children are only allowed to take part at the insistence, not permission insistence of their parents. Oh, is that because you consider that the sessions are dangerous? We just don't want any legal hassles. Do you dispute Mr. Blower's use of the word hysteria in describing these sessions? Hysteria can be a very constructive form of release. His use of the word sadism? To an outsider, it might look that way. The atmosphere of fear and repression amongst the residents? I would say intensity would be a better word. Enforced sexual abstinence, even among married couples, would you call that healthy? People choose to come to us. They can leave whenever they like. You have a sexual relationship, do you not? With Janine Watts? Sometimes. What do you mean? When she wants it. I mean, it's her choice. Oh, yes. So it's one rule for the rich and another for the poor. Sex is perfectly permissible amongst the members of the inner circle, but not amongst the hoi polloi downstairs. All of us at the open box are trying to work out something important about ourselves, our lives. We happen to believe that until people have found themselves, their strength, it's better for all irrelevances to be excluded. You say that in three years, something like 800 people have attended your courses. Yeah. Just about. How many of those have committed suicide or tried to do so? Why not ask me how many broke their legs or fell under buses? Well, perhaps you could tell us then how many suicide attempts there have been amongst your residential members at Chute Hall while you've been there. I'm sure you've checked with the hospitals you tell us. Five, Mr. Hayward. Five people in two years. And that doesn't include the attempts that haven't reached the hospital. All those cases in London before you came to Chute Hall. In addition, there have been three nervous breakdowns among residents of your chute hall. These are just the documented cases, Mr. Haywood. In all probability, just the tip of an iceberg. These people had problems before they came to us like Guppy. You can't lay these at our feet. Can't I? You still maintain that what you practice does not cause harm. Life is dangerous. Playing football is dangerous. Or buying a ticket for the underground. There's an element of risk in everything. For most of our residents, we provide something positive. We wouldn't attract so many if we didn't, would we? Oh, the world is full of gullible people, Mr. Hayward, as I'm quite sure the jury knows. You say your accounts have always been amicably agreed with the tax inspectors. You've seen them, haven't you? What was your job before you became caught up with the open box? Chartered accountant. You were a fully qualified chartered accountant. Well, it was as awful as you
you make it seem. Are you the accountant now for the open box? One of my jobs. Then you could tell us what your income was in the last tax year, couldn't you? Shall we take the courses first of all, please? They cost about four pounds per person per session, am I right? Just about. And thirty-five pounds for a weekend. That seems exorbitantly expensive. So is everything. What was your income on this account for the last financial year? £39,000 or so. Is that all? With so many people taking courses, that seems a very low figure, Mr Hayward. What was your income then from donations? £27,000. <laughs> so you admit to an income of £66,000 and still you are not able to make a profit. Ha! Huh. The house cost ninety grand. There's a price spiral, didn't you know? You have to pay for that in its upkeep. Feed and clothe 30 people, also visitors for weekend courses. Then there's the coffee bar, stationery, and producing a magazine's not cheap. Ah, know? this magazine, how often does it come out? Uh, weekly? No. Monthly? No. Quarterly, then? It varies. How many issues of this magazine have there been in the last 12 months? Two, I think. Two. But it's an expensive thing. Colour photographs, good paper, distributed free. There are also other expenses to do with fundraising and trying to open new open box centres. Have you actually opened a new centre? No. You still haven't? There are problems of personnel. Mm. Mr. Hayward, would you say from your experience as an accountant that so-called expenses for foreign trips, promotions, etc., are an item that it is notoriously easy to manipulate when you're drawing up your accounts? I'm speaking generally, you understand. Uh, have you ever encountered this practice, things like that? It happens. Yes. But not, not at the open box. No. no. This figure of £27,000 in donations, you always gave receipts, I presume? Always. We tried to. Did you give a receipt to Mr. Blower for the £50 that he paid to you? He paid by cheque. That's its own receipt. Would you agree, again speaking generally from your experience as an accountant, that it is at least possible where cash donations are concerned to hide these on your tax returns? Mm -hmm. I expect you've come across evasions in your times too, haven't you? Um, involving foreign bank accounts, that sort of thing. But no such practices ever occur at the open box. Yeah. Just as you deny manipulating expenses. I do. And you deny hiding your true income from sessions and courses. We're not asking you to like us. But just think, if we were bent, would I be stupid enough to bring this case? Arrogant enough, certainly. And if you hadn't brought it, wouldn't everyone have automatically assumed that you were, in your own word, bent?